it over to Lolita. I'm sorry. Uh, so this meeting is uh, recorded and I'm turning it over to Lolita for roll call. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. If I pronounce your name incorrectly, please let me know. Uh, Damien Cole. Yes, here. David Jacoman. Earl Brennison. I might have messed that up. Eric Ammerman. Present. Thank you. Greg Newman. Juan Martinez. Kathleen Stanfield. Present. Uh, can we have the record show that Juan is present? He, he is muted, though. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Kelly Orr. Lindsay Costello. I am here. Michael Gothrop Hutchins. I'm, I'm present. Michael Lansborough. Uh, Michael May, Panna uh, Stafford. Here. Let's have the record show that Michael Lansborough is also present but muted. Okay. Thank you, Lindsay. Paul Hewen. I'm here. Ryan Bernadette. Here. And Su Ting Shen. Thank you. That completes the roll call. All right. Thank you so much, Jackie. Um, for item number two, we are having the approval of today's agenda. Could I get a motion from somebody, please? Oh, motion. All right. We have a motion from Damian Cole. Could I get a second? Second. We have a second from Kathy Stanfield. Can I hear all in favor, please? Aye. 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 Any Aye. opposed? Aye. Hearing none, we approve November 1st's agenda. Um, item three is for RTC staff to read before public comment. I believe we do have public comment this evening. So if one of the staff members could read the big long paragraph. Participating via Zoom to provide a public comment during the meeting, please make sure your computer or device has a working microphone. Use the chat feature to submit a request to make a comment. When the time comes to make public comments, you will be invited to speak. If you're participating by telephone to provide public comment, you should have contacted RTC agency services prior to 4, 4 o'clock p.m. yesterday and provided the telephone number you would be calling from, as well as the items you want to comment on. When the time comes to make public comments, you will be invited to speak. All right, thank you so much. We also, for the record, um, Su Ting, Ting Chen and David Jockerman both showed up around 5.35 p.m. And uh, item four, public comment for this evening. I, do we want to turn it over to someone from RTC to take public comment? Do we have do we have a public comment? I believe Jill Hemingway was uh, speaking about being a public comment earlier. She's still showing up in in chat or in in my video. Okay. I, I am present. Um, I <clears throat> uh, I didn't necessarily have a public comment. I was trying to learn more about what this committee does, um, and so I was just kind of informationally just kind of joining. Awesome. There is public comment again later in the evening if you do have any. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Are you all right, Sue? Yes. Sorry. <laughs> Just making sure my settings are right. Sorry. No problem. All right. Item five, approval of the October 4, 2023 meeting minutes for possible action. Does anyone have any commentary on the last meeting minutes? And if not, can I get a motion to approve? I'll motion. All right. We have a motion from Damien Cole. Can I get a second? I'll second. 
Second from Paul Hewen. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, we approve the October 4th, 2023 meeting minutes. Item six, recommend approval of the proposed amendment number one to the FFY 2023 to 2027 Regional Transportation Improvement Program, our tip for uh, possible action. And we have Graham presenting. Take it away. All right, thank you, Lindsay. Um, let me just pull up my screen here. Has everybody seen the PDF here? We are seeing your Zoom screen. Okay. Why is it doing that? It's like your it's your web browser. There it goes. Okay. There we go. Um, so uh, we today I'll be presenting to you the uh, proposed amendment number one to our 2023 to 2027 regional transportation improvement program. Um, this amendment is necessary. Um, we actually have another one on the horizon, but we had to get this one on the November agenda just due to time sensitivity. Um, that first one being the, um, actually I'll, I'll kind of go backwards here. Uh, the, the project that is being added, um, is actually a Washoe County School District Safe Routes to School project. Um, it received funding through uh, Nevada Department of Transportation's Transportation Alternative Set-Aside Program. Um, they have a, a separate pot of money uh, that they use to fund transportation alternatives projects. Um, RTC has its own pot as well, and you'll, you'll hear a little bit about that in a moment. But uh, this project in particular um, was actually supposed to be um, started as of the federal fiscal year October 1st um, but due to some some issues on the on the back end um, between NDOT and the, the school district they couldn't get an agreement executed until now um, so we are trying to um, get this approved so that they can initiate their program for the federal fiscal year 2024 um, so that that is the project that's being added under this amendment. Um, and the uh, project that is being removed from our program of projects um, under this amendment is also a Washoe County School District Safe Routes to School project. Um, in this case, this was a project that had been awarded funding once again through the uh, RTCs allotment of transportation alternatives uh, set aside funds uh, through a prior cycle and um, Washoe County School District was unable to um, essentially secure the the funding from their associated uh, pots of money for the project um, and they are unable to go ahead and execute that project at this time. So they have um, asked to relinquish the funds back to RTC, uh, which would enable RTC to later award these funds through either a new call for projects or um, awarding funds to another project that was awarded during the last cycle that, that could actually use additional funding. So... Um, this project is being removed and in, instead of, you know, letting it sit until they are ready um, and potentially letting the funds expire, uh, we will sort of take them back to RTC and reaward them to another eligible project. That does not preclude Washoe County School District from applying for this same project in the future or being awarded funding under this program uh, in the future. And then also, I must mention a very, very late arrival, um, something that was not included in your packets, a, uh, the Nevada Department of Transportation, NDOT, um, just today actually asked to include another project here that you'll, you're seeing on your screen. Um, this would be an amendment to an existing project on I-80 uh, through Reno. Um, they essentially uh, got in some more up-to-date up cost estimates for 
pieces of their project. And so it, it, it increased the overall project cost beyond the threshold uh, required for, for an amendment. Um, and so the, the project scope uh, hasn't changed, you know, the, the year of funding hasn't changed. It's just a matter of they, they got updated cost estimates. And so this, this project has cost or uh, increased in cost significantly. So that those are the changes under this proposed amendment. I'll be happy to take any questions. Uh, yes, I had a quick question. Um, so are these two different items that we're speaking about, the I-80 versus the, uh, I just want to so, make sure I understand because. So yeah, there are there are three projects proposed to change under this under this amendment. Got it. Because I noticed in the the agenda packet, only two of those three pages were included. So I I wasn't familiar with the I eighty project. Correct. correct. Which is okay. yes, I I mentioned that this one was just given to to me today oh, by NDOT, oh, okay. and and uh, I'm making a special note of it for you guys here today that you did not receive it in your packets and. And this is what the project is essentially. So you you do have very limited, but you do have some time to review and and comment on this project specifically. Uh, yeah. So I wasn't uh, familiar with the uh, with the Safe Routes to School initiative. I looked very briefly at the Washoe County dot uh, Washoe the Washoe Schools dot net website, and it has a page devoted to safe routes to school. Could you tell me a little bit about what that pro program actually does? Sure. Unfortunately, we don't have a, a representative from Washoe County uh, School District safe routes to school program today. Uh, they might be able to better explain it, but I'll give it my best. Um, essentially, what what the safe routes to school program does is is they do a lot of outreach to uh, schools, you know, school children on how to um, walk and bike to school safely. Um, it, in this case, the, their two projects were to um, fund their, their supplies, equi equipment, and uh, educational and outreach activities. So that's the project that was being added. Um, and the one that was being removed was they had actually proposed to uh, purchase and install some um, uh, some radar signs, some radar feedback signs, and, and rapid flashing beacons uh, that they would install in in uh, particular school zones. So um, it really kind of runs the gamut of of what they do, but you know a lot of a lot of safety um, and and educational opportunities for for school children. Is is there anything that outlines the different uh, things that they had on the horizon? Because I mean, I would imagine that things like flashing beacons and stuff would already be in the the R tip, uh, or just like general road making, you know, for school zones, things like that. Yeah, they, you know, they, their projects don't get into our R tip until they actually um, apply for the funding um, through through our our federal programs. Uh, they may have their own dedicated funding source that that um, they use to implement projects. Otherwise. Um, if if they're not uh, you know funded through the FHWA or or FTA uh, federally right. funded, they're not required to to be in our our tip unless they're deemed regionally significant. Which again, a lot of times their their projects are just simply outreach and don't actually impact the um, transportation network or system. Right. So I I don't want to take up too much time with this. I just want to get real quick a, a question: Is this a new program or? Is it something that is an annual program and for some reason this year wasn't able to achieve, you said it was funding through another agency that they weren't able to, to I, I'm, I'm sorry, what, why is this being taken out of the? Yeah, so this is, their Safe Routes program is, Safe Routes to School uh, program is ongoing. It's not a new thing. Um, mm -hmm. They just have, um, obviously they can they can decide how they want to run and implement their program from year to year. Um, one year they had proposed to um, install these these uh, radar signs in school zones. Uh, they initially thought that they had the funding commitment for that project. Um, it turned out, you know, long story short, it turns out they did not have the funding for that project. So they had to essentially relinquish 
relinquish the funds back to RTC. So in other words, they didn't have the program internally put together right, and so they're losing federal funds? Is that... So I'm I think what Graham is trying yeah. to explain is RTC matches funds. Got it. Okay. So Washoe County, something must have happened where they didn't yeah. have those funds to match. Yes, yeah, sorry. But that there, doesn't there mean that they required. can't come back. Yeah. Okay. So will, will they be able to come back this school year or would they have to wait for the next school year? I, uh, I, I guess know, our, yeah. our next call for projects won't be till spring of 2025. So they would have to wait until then. If, if wow. you'd Obviously, like to, to speak up, David, I'm yeah, sorry, I see he's he's mentioned something in chat. Oh, I don't know yeah, if you've sorry. got a microphone. I wasn't looking at the <laughs> yeah, chat. I, yeah, I, I don't know, actually, if this is specifically RRFBs that would be at the Vaughn Middle School expansion. Graham, do you happen to know that? I don't know the location that they had proposed for okay. this project. I don't know if they made it that far. Okay. I'm. We are currently in talks with the city to provide a recommendation for RRFBs at that on Vassar at that middle school as a part of the expansion that's going to take place there. If this is what that one is, that would make sense as to why it's coming up here because that would not be in an RTIP. That's the result of a recommendation just being made in a traffic study, which just wouldn't be something coming from an RTIP. So if that's not the case, then the context I'm providing is uh, irrelevant, but that might be what this is yeah. um, because that would be initiated by safe roads to school. Sorry. Thanks David. Yeah. So yeah. I just had, a, sorry, just quick question about the, the amount of reallocation. So it looked here in the agenda item six, it mentions that the projects would be reallocated a uh, $77,900 in federal funding. Is that the amount that we're out reallocating? Because on the next, Two pages after that, it says something about a hundred thousand, hundred six thousand, two hundred and seventy-five. Uh, yeah, the the seventy-seven thousand nine hundred is is what's being removed from this project here. That that's the right. amount that's being essentially deleted from our our tip, um, and the the amount that had been awarded to this this project previously. And, so they're, and where, giving, they're giving back the federal share of of this project. And and where do those funds go once they're returned to RTC? As I mentioned, we're going to most likely hold another call, an off-cycle call for projects um, okay. to award these funds so that they don't expire. Or we could essentially give them to a, a project that was awarded through our last cycle um, that could use additional funding. So it's like a general fund. It's like kind of allocated later on. It, yeah. It's a sub-allocation of, of federal funds that we receive through the uh, FHWA Transportation Alternative Set-Aside Program. Okay. All right. Yes. Uh, sorry, I'm not too familiar with the. <laughs> with That's, the... All right. <laughs> That's all right. That's right. information. I mean, it's 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 a meager amount compared to some other projects, like even like the the I eighty project, sure. uh, which I guess I I don't know if I'm allowed to. Ask. I I want to open the floor to let other people ask questions. I just I, I did have a follow up question about the I the I eighty. If this is also something that we're um, voting on, I yes. Have questions about that later, but. Uh, but I, I'll I'll wait until everyone else is done. Yeah, my just, only question is: Is there another thirty million in the pot to match for NDOT for I eighty? Uh, they they've got. Um, I don't know what the change in the funding mix was. Um, I can I can look that up and get that back to you, Lindsay. But. Um, my assumption is it, it's coming out of their portion of their uh, STBG funding. Okay, makes sense. Yeah. And they do have a state match on here, so they do have their required state share. Yes. Yeah. Does anyone else have any other questions? Yeah, quick question about the um, fund reallocation for that last project. Would it be possible to make sure that those funds go to a similar project for either school transportation or, you know, uh, multimodal infrastructure, as opposed to it going to a different project that might just be uh, for cars? So the, the transportation alternatives uh, program is specifically for non-auto. Um, it is for transportation alternatives to the auto. Um, so, yes, it could be. 
uh, a bike project, it could be a pedestrian project, it could be a, a, a off street trail project, you know, things like that. So, um, okay, cool. That's good to hear. Thank you. Sure. Good question. So, um, uh, if everyone else is about the IED, is that so it's for a retaining wall? Because this is the first time I'm seeing this. It's a retaining wall and and what else? Auxiliary lane is is kind of the primary ah, feature of, of this project, but there's some associated improvements as well. And is that uh, for the south side on the eastbound lane? between? Correct. Got it. And the so that's between West McCarran and Keystone. And is that because of the residential developments that are all happening next to the cemetery? Um. I'm not sure the the full justification behind it. I think they they probably have a, a traffic analysis that dictates that the level of of traffic through there warrants a, a, a you know an auxiliary lane. Well, no, not the. I'm talking about the barrier, the and the sound wall. Oh, the sound wall. Oh, yeah, because okay. there's like a little canyon creek there. So they have the. They have the Truck and Midas Water Authority uh, flume that brings water in from the Highland Ditch, and then. Um, over that can and you, know, you can see the Highland it's kind of going north up to Putnam in between 7th and Keystone and that crosses it goes underneath the freeway at one point but south of that where that little squiggly area is right next to the green area and you see the the uh the, the Masonic uh uh cemetery there in between there and there there's a lot of residential development happening in that area and I think that might be the reason why they're putting a sound barrier i i don't know if the if the sound barrier or the sound wall is for the entire length of it because obviously the cemetery has been around for uh close to 70 plus years and they've never needed a sound wall there before i mean obviously the not many uh ears to listen to it there if you understand my catch my drift sure. there but <laughs> yeah. i mean it can but, also be a courtesy i i personally wouldn't want to go mourn with all the yeah. highway noise if that's where they're putting the sound wall i i don't think we have anybody from ndot to comment on where it is yeah nobody nobody was from ndot was able to attend today but i can uh follow up with them and get those details if you'd like yeah just because uh, i I'm, I'm not exactly sure 100 percent what we're voting on are we just acknowledging a, a receipt of this or what, what exactly is the action that we're taking here yeah, this is to essentially recommend to the RTC board approval of this amendment. I see. So it's it's for the allocation of funds for the for the Washoe County thing, and it's also we're making a recommendation to allocate fifty four point three million dollars for this I eighty project. Uh, it, it's not specifically for a, a reallocation of funds. It's it's to delete that project for, and remove ah. it from the RTIP, and then also oh, we're add the other project, uh, the Washoe County Safe Routes to School project, and yeah. then to amend this existing project in the RTIP to increase the total project cost. I see. Okay. Um, I do have a uh, question that this might be a, needs to be followed up with NDOT, but to going from uh, roughly 21 million to 54 million, did someone just completely drop the ball when costing out the project, or has there been scope changes on the project itself? For you know, is it going to be extra miles for the auxiliary lane? Is the sound wall longer? That's probably going to be an end dot question, but to Seeing a project double in cost seems like more than, well, materials gotten more expensive, what do you expect, type thing. Based on the limited information that I got from NDOT, it does look like um, the quantity was changed for the sound wall, so a, presumably a longer extent of the sound wall, um, because they did note that the, um. the quantity did change. So, um, And then the associated... Uh, CE with that would be, um, and crew augmentation for that would be increased as well. Um, sorry, Michael, I want to wait for you to be done, but I just noticed yeah. something. All right. Well, well, I mean, that was kind of my main question. The, are we 
Yeah. Are we looking at a matter of for we've looked at it and realized the project needs to be bigger, or is this a matter of we looked at it and oh no, we had no idea how much it was going to cost, and it sounds like it's the former, not the latter. That's that's what I can tell from from the like I said, the information that was provided to me. Um, so if if uh, Michael, were you, were you finished? I just I want to follow up something. Here yeah, that, that was. So okay. I think that's my only question, <laughs> unless you're going to rattle something loose with what you ask. I, well, you yeah, actually had exactly. Well, OK, so, yeah, your your, your point up brought up something else. Um, give me one moment here. I just need to see if I can. No, I cannot. OK, I can't share my screen. But I'll give you a link in the chat to what I'm looking at here. So this is the area that in question that we're talking about. Uh, I can't figure out a place where a sound wall would even be necessary. We're talking about a uh, height difference uh, in this area for existing homes that have been around for well over 50 years. We're talking mid fifties construction up on Stardust, north of the freeway, it looks like. And then south of the freeway, we're talking about a chasm, like I mentioned with uh existing development that's been around for uh, a while and additional development, but you can see that the, the difference in uh, the, this it's uh, it's at least I have have to go to Google earth to actually do some, it's a, it's a long ways away. Now in regards to the cemetery, the height difference there is at least 20 feet. And so in other words, the uh, natural landscape, the height different because basically this freeway is a, is a cut through it's an open cut it starts dipping okay, down in elevation so, sorry damien in in, in uh yeah well I basically what I'm, what it, I'm saying like is, devil's it, advocate i know you're trying but in yeah. order to keep this rolling and okay. and dot isn't here to defend themselves or explain it so we exactly. don't know where they're putting the sound wall we have no idea i personally happen to live 40 feet underneath 580 uh -huh. without that sound wall I would hate my life. Okay, we're not talking about 580. I'm I sorry, know, who, who but is this? Uh, I want to make sure. Is, this is Lindsay Costello, the chair. Oh, hi. 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 Yes. Uh, so say say there's a house that's been there for 70 years. Mm -hmm. The increase in traffic has been exponential. So yes. the sound yes. has been exponential. Until we have NDOT to explain what they're doing and hopefully rtc can facilitate an end up member coming in to explain to us Correct. i think we should move on because this this isn't very productive that's exactly what i'm, okay. I'm going to Lindsay. propose i i would make a motion if all if all discussion is done i'm going to make a motion to table this until in dot is here to actually explain the project I can't, I can't vote on something without any information we're just asking to give them money i know and it's a lot of money and that's my motion. My motion is to table this until NDOT gives us a presentation for what they're asking for. And that that would be the the recommendation to the RTC board then. That, yes, that that, that's my, well, that presumably. My, yeah. So what we what we have done in the past, Damien, is is that you could approve this on the condition that the RTC board receives more information from NDOT. Perhaps they could present, you know, specifically on this project or send more information in advance. Um, yes. Yeah. Well, and, uh, yeah. Go ahead. Well, but uh, my recommendation would be to table this uh, this item for a future agenda meeting. That's that's my motion on the floor. If anyone wants to second that. I would second it because it seems like a lot of money for less than two miles of wall. The cost is definitely not entirely for the wall, but since we do have a first from Damian Cole and a second from Kathy Stanfield, can we get a vote on the motion to table this until NDOT gives us more information? Are you calling for a vote? <laughs> yes, yes, I am calling uh, for a vote. Yes, I. 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 Hi. Martinez, I. All right, any opposed? Nay. Okay, we have one nay. I think that was from David. 
No, Greg Newman. Nay. Greg Newman. We have a nay from Greg Newman. I do not know what we do when we have a hung jury. We've never had this before. Well, it's, I don't know that I'm uh, have as many votes as the others. I just felt as though this was. Um, I believe that I believe the motion just dies, right? I don't know, and then we, pro we can sure. progress to the next agenda item. Graham, anybody? Well, in Robert's rules of order, it's if it's hung, then you're right, you move on. If it's negative, then the motion uh, dies. If it's in the positive, then you move it to the next agenda. All right, so we are hung. Um, because we haven't voted on it earlier, I know this is most likely also going to be hung, but we have not voted yet. So I would like to get a motion uh, whether or not to recommend approval of the proposed amendment on item six. You can vote nay, Damien. I'm sorry. I I I was actually wondering. Uh, could you repeat that, please? I'm sorry. I'm just asked because we but we just had a vote on your motion. Yes. I'm just asking for a vote on the motion in item six. You are allowed to say nay. We also have a hand up from, uh, I'm going to butcher your name, Pana. Pana? Hi, and I'll just go ahead. Um, in the, I'm new to this uh, committee, but in the past, uh, when I've been part of other bodies, it's been possible to receive information by email um, to provide uh, more context for items that people didn't feel comfortable voting on. So I just want to put it out there that perhaps an option is um, for NDOT to provide a written summary to this group and that uh, votes can be collected by email if that's in accordance with your procedures. Thanks. Also have a hand up from Michael. Uh, so uh, so, yeah, I had a couple of questions. It sounded like there were more eyes than nays. And secondly, oh. is uh, item six, isn't that what we just, I mean. There were, in fact, more eyes than nays, but as I believe, any nay still means no. If, if someone, please correct me if I'm wrong. Well, in other words, it has to be a unanimous decision. I believe so. Uh, for... I didn't know it needed to be unanimous. I could be wrong. I didn't uh, think that it needed to be. I just thought that I wanted to be on the record that I believe that RTC presented their side of this. And that's all that our board is to see is that they presented the facts as they've been presented to them. Not that we need a whole nother, um, a whole nother industry to step forward and tell us why they are uh, at the cost points that have become so much more expensive than they were four years ago. We understand that things cost a lot more than they did. So that's that's all. But I do believe that the motion should carry if it's nothing more than a majority wins, which I believe is the case. Well, I'd like to say that I would agree with you. I think that what they presented, I think, was clear enough. And uh, so I, I agree with you. I think that uh, what they presented was what they came to present, they presented it. The, you know, the fact that it's cost more than before, you're right. Everything costs more than before. And so to sit down and say, well, this shouldn't cost that much, that's not our call. It costs Correct. what it costs. Correct. That as well. Um, in the spirit of that, could I please get a motion on item number six to recommend approval or not? of the proposed oh. amendment number one to the fis uh, federal fiscal year 23 to 27 are to I'll make a motion to approve. Sorry. I will second have a first from Greg Newman and a second from Paul Human. Can I get uh, all up? Uh, eh. Any opposed? Um, all in favor. I was going to say, um, is there the option to abstain? <laughs> yes, always. Uh, yeah. Since, I mean, honestly, you're, you're, yeah, if we're talking about uh, table it until we get more information, uh, I can give a uh, yes or no. Or, but to, you know, beyond just the your uh, uh, price increase, the uh, fact that it's so uh, so uh, 
it's sounding like they've also changed what the project is. So based on what was said earlier um, by Graham. Uh, the, the scope has not been updated. Uh, the, the, okay. quanti the quantity for the sound wall, it says the quantity is updated, but that, that doesn't change the, the scope of work. Yeah. Um, and, and, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. And I'll admit that, you know, when I, we might be using the scope and colloquial versus technical. But Graham, uh, Graham, this is David Jockerman. I have a question. Do you have any information on the um, quantity of earth that changed as a part of this? I do not. Okay. Uh, but, uh, I mean, it's it's almost sounding like uh, this is a yeah uh, yeah. Uh, it does sound like they've made changes to what the project is. So and uh, Grandma's just some told of, you they haven't. Yeah. All right. Um, so. Well, well, I I well. don't know if I agree with that because the scope means from point A to point B, it's located in the same place. The scope of it. But the project involvement, what it's actually doing, could have changed, and and unfortunately, NDOT isn't here to, to tell us. So that's why I'm just like saying, well, can we table this until they can tell us? And uh, because it's not that I don't want to approve or disapprove something, uh, it's just I don't have enough information to make a decision at this time because this is something completely new. That's that's all I'm saying. Is it's it's not like I'm not saying I don't want a sound wall if people need it. I'm just trying to figure out you know what and it I, is yeah <laughs> I, I think some of this is the fact that it was so uh, dropped on us about uh, 30 seconds before we started having discussion and uh, i know that's no one here's fault but to, would it be possible to uh, approve the amendment the proposed amendment minus the end dot project that's what i was yeah yeah i, I was that way the I other two can move forward Yes, yes spe I would specifically there. about the end dot portion, the the part about the school system, that seems like a done deal to me because they, they can't use the money. Yeah, the you know, one and two, perfectly fine with it. It's this end dot one that's been sprung on us at the last minute that uh, none of us saw before about 10 minutes ago. Right. Where, where, and end dot isn't here to explain any of the you know, rationale on the changes so 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 if there's a way that we can do that split of we're approving one and two and we're holding off until we can have the time to do a proper review and due diligence on three is it possible yeah. to approve on the agenda we were given graham since we were not given the end dot pro uh piece that that was my question, yeah. I'm, yeah, because it's not even in the that. agenda. So could I get a, me a motion to recommend approval of the proposed amendment as we were given in our agenda packet without the end up project? I would second that. Actually, Lindsay, real quick. Make a motion. Sorry, Jim, what do you have to say, Jim? Yeah, just, just real quickly, I happened to look at the CMAC uh, bylaws. Oh, thank and, you. Uh, and there's a section for voting that says, quote, the number of votes necessary to take action on the matter and it is an affirmative vote taken by a majority of the members present. So the motion we just so had Damien's that was motion carried. Damien's motion did carry. That is correct. Thank you, Jim. I okay. probably should have read and, all the bylaws when I got. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and um, not to throw a uh, uh, spanner in the works, so, um, uh, but. When everyone just started saying the word agenda a bunch of times, so um, uh, we have no uh, agenda. Uh, <laughs> uh, but so, uh, uh, my understanding is we are subject to open meeting law. We might not even be allowed to take any action on this since it wasn't on the agenda far enough in advance. That is true. I didn't think about that one. So, so, we're, 
So I would recommend that we go ahead with approving as the agenda we were given. Yeah. Uh, is that a motion? I can't motion. I am chair. Ah, uh, okay. Sorry. So yeah. I'm asking for a motion. I motion that we accept the agenda as it as we received it and vote on that. I would second that. Eric Ammerman and a second from Damian Cole. And all in favor, please. Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Hearing none, we approve item six as we were given it without the end dot um, <laughs> addition. <laughs> okay. <laughs> item seven. Does anyone have any member announcements? I have nothing written, nothing to really. Right. Hearing um, none. Oh, well, wait. Yeah, I don't know if this falls under potential future agenda items or if this is something that to, should wait to the second public comment. To, but as a your, your regular rider of the regional connector, several of the other passengers have asked if I can have discussion brought up either at this level or they'd really like it at the RTC board level about how inconsistent it seems that the policies are where whether or not regional connector issues transfers seems to be dependent on the driver, seems to be dependent on which supervisor you get a hold of, different places on the website have different information, and it has been causing a lot of frustration with the riders, um, also frustration on inconsistency with drivers actually enforcing the fare rules in general. Well, like I said, I don't know if that's a, you know, if that's more appropriate here, or if that should wait for the next agenda. I the next agenda for public comment. So I think that's agenda eight or nine. Michael, uh, uh, for the record, Jim Gee, Director of Public Transit for RTC. Uh, I think this is a perfectly fine time. Uh, we did see a complaint on Monday of this week, specifically on that issue and the a driver not doing a transfer on the regional connector. Um, we've had some discussions in, internally about the need to basically clarify our website and making sure all of our drivers are educated because evidently that's not happening now. And so, uh, yeah, we're gonna take action of that. And what I'll do, Michael, and for everybody, I'll just put my contact in information in the chat. And if you have a specific issue or complaint, you can just uh, send it to me directly and I'll take care of it. But uh, but I am, I just want to acknowledge, I'm aware that we did have an issue earlier this week with a transfer not happening or the driver said the computer was down or some answer like that, that we are investigating. Um, yeah. I mean, like I said, the I made the mistake of... Uh, for letting other people on the bus know my name and they put two and two together, the, hey, we recognize that name. We've seen that in the minutes before. We're going to complain to you. No good. But, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I just realized how dark and brooding my webcam is. Got to right, put some so light on next time. So I'm looking at item number uh eight do we have rtc ride access staff items um lindsay jick and jim gee i don't have any access ride staff items happy to answer any questions as i can all right excellent and jim did put his information in chat for anyone who needs it um so item nine we do have our exit uh our additional public comment if jill who has been happily sitting here this whole time would like to comment on any of the uh, nuttery that happened this evening? No, I'm still good. I'm still listening. It's very interesting. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you for coming. All right. Item 10, adjournment. Could I get a, me uh, a motion, please, for adjournment? Make a motion to adjourn. Um, right, we have a first. Um, second. Win. I, 
real quick before we adjourn, where is the copy of the bylaws? Because I asked for a copy back in May and I was uh, forwarded to the advisory committee information governing policies website. Is that the same thing or do we actually have like a set of bylaws? Damien, I can send a, a copy to you. Excellent. Thank you so much. Yes, I'll second that. <laughs> okay, so we had a first for adjournment from Paul Hewen, and I believe I heard a second from Greg Newman first. Oh, Greg, sorry. All right, so, well, it's all good. All in favor, please. Aye. Aye. Any Aye. Aye. None. We adjourn at 16, 18 p.m. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.